Alright, what's up y'all? We are currently on the way to get a chop, chop, chop. But that might top my hair, you know what I'm saying? Just cutting the sides, you know what I'm saying? Getting the fade. Uh, Cause you know the boy, boy gets his hair braided tomorrow, so I gotta get my hair cut. Otherwise, it's gonna look weird if I have hair on the side of my head with braids. It just don't look right. You gotta have the sides cut, you know what I'm saying? I need the sides cut anyways, cause you know what I'm saying? You can't let it grow out too much. I hate, oh, I hate when it does that. You know, back at Brevard, that's one thing. When you go to college and your barber is back at home, Man, you miss him because you when you start looking in the mirror and you start looking at your head and you start saying, I might as well just, just buzz it. You know what I'm saying? Because it'd be easier. But one way or another, we on the way to get this cut. Start off the day. No, I did not lift this morning. I did not lift this morning. But don't be mad. You know why? Because AB's going to hit it later. You know what I'm saying? As long as you let me out work when I'm supposed to, I'll be in that gym because I'm supposed to. You hear me? Y'all, the day's about done, and your boy is uh one clip in, two now. You know what I'm saying? Don't get on me. It's been a pretty long day. I put together 310 signs in the storage unit and have another 200 to do tomorrow, so let me slide. And, you know, this is my last day with this haircut, man. Well, not this haircut. This is my last day with this hairstyle because I'm getting that joint braided tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to probably keep that in for... Mm, I kept it in too long last time. I think I kept it in a month. So I'm going to go about three weeks, maybe. I'm going to leave them in as long as I keep them looking good. You know what I'm saying? And when it starts looking bad, I'll, I'll get away with it because I'm going to put it on a do rag. You ain't going to have no clue. So I'm still going to look good. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, what I love is that I look so crazy whenever my hair, like, y'all see me when my hair is done and when it's not done, man. Like, right now, not done. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't do a dang thing with it today, but pull it back. And I, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting away with it. To look a little crazy. I need to stop. I need to stop popping pimples, man. If you if you're dealing with acne, please stop popping your pimples. I got good at not popping them for a while, and I've gotten bad again, man. I need to lock in. Cause I'm telling you, like you make it so much harder on yourself, bro. Like just do your. If you want your skin to get better, do what it takes. I, I love to say all the time. If you want to get better, if you if you want to get where you want to go, do what it takes. Like I'm going to the gym right now. You know what I'm saying? Well, this morning I woke up, said nah, not today. I'm still going though. You know what I'm saying? Cause I want to do what it takes. So I want my face to get better and I have to do what it takes for it to get better, man. So you gotta break bad habits. And popping pimples is a really bad habit, man. But we can we can do it, I believe. We can do it. Man, that sun was shining on right before it hit the trees, trying to kill somebody, man. Man, like the sun know it's beautiful, but it ain't gotta show itself off all the time. You know what I'm saying? That car trying to come up in the way. What's going on today, man? I like it's a full moon with the full sun. People acting in reverse. It don't even make no sense. We got werewolves acting like people instead of, see, look, the sun trying to act. No, no, don't try to get shy now. Look at you. Look at you all up in my face, man. Back up, man. Hello, hello, hello. How are y'all doing? Welcome to another edition of Face the Facts. And today, it's time that we face the facts. Man, just got done reading Jeremiah, the second chapter. And I want to harp on free will once again. And the major decision to choosing life with God and choosing life without God. And it's just honesty. When we talk about choosing life without God, we have to accept the worthlessness, the, 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 the empty void that there is without him. We have to accept the emptiness, the hopelessness. We have to accept the temporary as temporary and that we have chosen this life over eternity. When you choose life without God, you choose death. When you choose life without God, you choose hopelessness. And you can't tell me there's anything else to choose because everything in this life is only in this life. And so when we pass away, where is its worth? In a world without God, we are nothing, nothing but atoms, clumps of cells. And so what gives us value? What really gives us value? Because once we die, all we would do is go into the ground and decompose. And so for anybody who chooses to live a life void of God, accept the hopelessness of life without the Lord. Accept the hopelessness of the ideologies that do not subscribe to a Lord like Christ. 
think about what comes with a life without God. And think about what your life looks like when you say to the Lord that you want separation. If God is the God of peace, then you're telling him you want to separate yourself from peace. If God is the God of joy, then you're saying that you want to be separated from joy. It's time to face the facts. It's time to look away from, oh, how this makes me, how I feel about things, how I look and look to what things are. We struggle today with a, with a question of truth. We were too stuck on the idea that if somebody else, you have a truth. This person has a truth. We all have truths. Now understanding that there's only one truth. There can't be multiple truths. Everybody can have an opinion, but the opinion does not override truth. There is a truth, and Jesus Christ claimed to be that truth. And so it's, it, it's not time to sit here and be delusional, y'all. It's not time. We don't have time to sit here and be delusional. Because there is a truth that we must understand. And for anybody who has integrity, anybody who has the, the, the desire to know more and to, to live a life with more, a more fulfilling life, that you must seek truth. But we have so many people who are fine living a life, living life in confusion, living life in lies. And I was reading Jeremiah and it, and it, it basically called just the worthlessness uh, of life and serving serving false idols serving a false purpose outside of god the worthlessness of it the moment you place value on anything that was higher than god you per place your value on something that is worthless because what wor what what is the worth of anything without god the one who created it and when you think of a man and a woman, if there is no God, then our value is only as good as the breath in our lungs. As long as we can breathe, we have value. But the second we take our last breath, that human that was once there no longer has a value because that human is no longer a human. But because we know there is a God, there is a spirit that is in this body, one that is created in the image of God, that gives an intrinsic value that no man or woman can place, but it has been placed by God. And therefore, there is value on that human spirit. And because there is value in the human spirit, I want to see that human spirit in a place with value. And we'll say it again. Hell, in a way, is punishment. But in a greater way, hell is, the, is a compliment to those that have said to God they don't want to live with him. It's God's compliment to your free will. It's God saying, you made the decision to tell God you don't want to live with him. And so he says you don't have to. But again, if God's presence is is just, if God's in God's presence there is a beauty, if in God's presence there is peace, if in God's presence there is joy, then if a world or a place void of of God would be void of these things. So don't expect hell to be all cherries, butterflies and and and, and big old or oh, oh, trees and, and sunshine and beauty. Because again, if it is void of God, then it is void of those things that God is. And if God is supposed to be the embodiment of good, then hell is going to be the embodiment of evil. That's just how it is. And sadly, we have people who don't want to face the facts. And it's not a thing to scare you. But it's a thing to let you understand that God didn't doesn't want anybody to go to hell. It is God's will that none should perish. But we have so many people who don't look at how things are, but instead look at how they want things to be or think they should be. Not understand that we are finite human beings and we are flawed. We are all so flawed. We've all made some big mistakes. I can think of so many big mistakes I've made and still make to this day. I am not perfect. But through Christ Jesus, we can be made righteous. We can be made justified. We can be we can be given strength out of our own that we may become better. And it, we will never be perfect. And trying to live a perfect life, trying to live a perfect life is so difficult for those that are imperfect. And many people think that you have to be perfect to go to heaven. You don't have to be perfect. You just got to know the one that is perfect so that he can, he can ascribe his perfection to you. And that's what Jesus Christ does. On the cross, he ascribed his perfection to his people. 
cleaning them and making them new that they may enter the kingdom and be given new bodies and have a new heart and a new spirit and a new renewing of mind that they shall no longer live and love the things of this world, but instead find worth and value in Christ Jesus, not in the money, the the the, the vases and the, the arts and the, and the different things of this world, which are beautiful things God has blessed us to enjoy. But God did not give us to make idol because as long as money is our God, life will be worthless because once we die, we will never hold on to it. You have to think about these things that you're putting your faith and your life in. What is the true worth? If the worth only goes as long as your life, then maybe you need something with some more worth. Maybe you need a bigger, a bigger thing to believe in. It's great to have faith. But it's important what you put your faith in. You need something of substance, something that's going to be that's going to hold up the weight of your faith. You don't want to have faith in thin ice because you can have all the faith in the world in that ice. If you jump out on it, it's going to give weight. But if you have some thick ice and you jump out there, and you have faith. You could have no faith. You got the littlest faith in the world. When you step on a thing, it's not going to let you go through. God is that thick ice. You put your faith in him. And he will save you. He'll hold you. And he is the one that will take you further than anything else in this life. But you you put your faith in the things of this world, it's worthless. The second we lose our lives, it can do nothing for us. And now we're sitting in eternal separation because we chose not to know the one that said that he wants to know us. All because we wanted to chase things without worth. We wanted to chase creation instead of the creator. And that to me, and that in general, is worthless. Let us pray. Father, we seek the worth that it is in you. We seek you, Father, and we just seek your face and we seek, Lord God, your understanding. We don't understand everything. We don't know everything. And honestly, sometimes it feels like we know nothing. But we trust you, Lord God, to show us, Lord God, the truth. We ask you to guide us and give us strength. We ask you, Lord God, to never leave us nor forsake us. And as we walk through this life, the moments where we're confused, the moments where we know we know what we're doing, the moments, Lord God, where we may just be throwing our hands with Lord God to the sky and just and just shouting for prayers, Lord God. We ask you just be with us, that you'll be there and give us the strength, Lord God, to overcome and, and to grow, Lord God, in a new and, and, and into into the newness, Lord God, of life and character that you call for us to enter into, Father. We thank you, Father. We love you. We we glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Well, y'all, man. Hey, this light is bright. It's 4 a.m. 5 a.m. now. If y'all enjoyed this vlog, man, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I pray you enjoy that vibe, man. Hey, no limit. Young and winning, most straight out of state, ain't coming back. They call me Alex at the crib, but they be on the track. My homie Dorsey saying that it's me, but he the Mac. The shorty call me Chester, she a fly that I attract.